A lot of Magic players spend tremendous amounts of money building up collections of cardboard collectibles only to find that some of these cards become worthless over time, even though at the time of purchase you may have spent even hundreds of dollars buying these cards. So is there a way to protect yourself from these cards being devalued? The answer might surprise you. Protecting your assets from devaluation. Can it happen in Magic the Gathering? What are the steps you would have to take to make sure you don't lose your shirt on spending money on Magic cards? Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. You know, if you were talking in an open market about devaluation, you'd be saying diversify, spread your wings, make sure you chose a whole bunch of stable things with a few risky and you get a good overall balance. Well, really, it's not that different for Magic the Gathering. When you're talking about all these amazing pieces of cardboard that we collect, remembering that it's a game, it's a hobby, we have a lot of fun, but at the same time, these cards can cost you hundreds of dollars depending on the deck you're building and the circumstances in which you're putting this deck together. And for what reason, um, yeah, you may want to protect yourself and insulate yourself from some of the losses that could potentially come down the road. There are several ways to do this. Now, the first off I would say is mentioning the reserve list. If you're buying some high-end cards on the reserve list, you're already kind of insulated with the protection kind of guarantee. These cards will not get reprinted. But that's kind of a, a simplified easy way to explain it to you because a lot of reserve list cards are not that great and they don't have a lot of value so really they're going to fluctuate massively with the reserve list value itself so good cards go up in the reserve list or if there's buyouts across the reserve list a lot of these cards get dragged up in value but when those cards don't sell a lot of these cards also fall in value it depends on which cards you're after but of course there's about 110 120 cards that are really decent on the reserve list and they seem to be resistant to total devaluation and they don't really lose as much as people realize when they actually look at the overall lifespan of how these cards have been valued since 2008 onwards okay so you can always look at those if there's cards you want from the reserve list if you're looking at dual lands although you may pay a chunk of change for them they're kind of protected just inherently okay so it's kind of a safe bet that they're going to make you know a, at least a break-even point for you depending on how you decide to sell if you do now new cards the scariest the, the roller coaster ride you hope doesn't end too soon because you spend a lot of money and you buy something like um, Shoulder of the Apocalypse. Ah, great card, okay? Dominary United. Well, first off, look where it was made. This thing was made inside Dominary United. Well, that set's a few years old. It's been around a few years. It didn't get banned and the value went really high. So if you're buying a Shoulder at this point in the game, you're taking a very risky endeavor because chances are within the next year or two, that card's getting a reprint. I generally like to use a five-year window. And what I mean by that is within five years, chances are that card's getting a reprint, so you better decide to use it for a while and then sell it when it's at a still market high, when it has a lot of value still attached to the card. Because the more useful and powerful that card is, the quicker it seems to fall into the reprint cycle of Wizards of the Coast. They got their they got their eye on that card and they can't wait to reprint it, but they know they have to give you guys a little bit of time because they want that card to drift up in value as its playability factor goes high. But that also gives prospective players who are spending a lot of money on this a window of opportunity to buy the card, enjoy the card, but get out before it goes to zero. Paying attention to the market and remembering the time frame in which you bought the card, especially if you get it at release, you know you've got at least a few years of great times ahead of you before you need to sell that card. And I know it's hard to think that you've got to sell a card before you're done playing with it, but it's the easiest way to make sure you get some return on investment because depending on where this card was printed, let's say Dominator United, where it's likely to show up, in this case, probably a premium product like a Modern Horizons 3 or some kind of Ultimate Master Series product, depending on where it's going to show up and the value attached to those reprint products, it may get opened a lot, but in recent years, it gets opened a lot less and the value seems to actually be retained, at least currently. Now, there's a lot of exceptions. There's a lot of things that can change. Let me show you guys this first card here. Remember this. This is Kozilek the Great Distortion from Oath of the Gatewatch. This thing came in as like a $18 card, dipped down, didn't see a lot of action, five, six bucks. But then as it became popular in things like Commander, 
and that's a big format. Don't deny it, guys. You can see the value went really high. It went above the $25, $26 mark. But then with Commander Masters, this thing plummeted, man. It took a nosedive and it's never recovered. This thing's like a dollar, okay? A dollar fifty. It's still a great card. But now it's available for everybody. Wizards has killed the market for the card. And yes, there's a chance these things can recover, but not likely, right? We're not gonna see that guy bounce back to 15, 20 bucks. So if you were holding on to that card, like the Moxman still has like eight, nine copies of that, I saw my card go from twenty-five dollars down to, you know, like eight bucks in total, which is kind of scary, but it's going to happen in a collectible card game. It's a hobby. It's a fun thing. That's what people tell us, right? But not, they're, you know, they're not the ones losing all that money. So we pay attention to this. Now, another card, like a more recent set, if you were taking a look here at Tiny Bones, the pit pocket, remember when this guy was at that $35, $36 mark, and now he's drifting down, lost $4, lost $5. He's kind of drifting down, but there's a funny thing about this card. I'm not sure that's the bottom because of all the things he can do and we haven't seen Bloomboro or Duskmorn. We don't know if there's any combination cards that are going to bring that value back up and make it a more enticing card. So if somebody had that card and they paid a slightly higher value, you've already paid for it, you've already bought it. You might as well ride the roller coaster a little bit further to see where this card goes because it may not drop as low as you think. You've got to determine that risk factor of how badly you need to be able to get cash out if you need to trade in or trade up versus I can ride this thing all the way. I don't care. I just want to enjoy the card because that's the funny thing about this game. It's so much fun to play that sometimes when you've built a deck, you're not willing to tear that deck apart for anything. You don't care. You just want to own the card. And for those players, this kind of conversation really doesn't matter to you. You don't care if it goes to zero because you're keeping it forever. It's part of your collection. And that's understandable. But a card like Tiny Bones for somebody who did spend money and was hoping to kind of get out before the card do you know, drops to zero. Well, the Outlaws of Thunder Junction just released a few months ago. We got a long way to go for this card to really see where it pans out. Same with cards like Slick Shot, Sure Shot. We don't know where these cards are going to go. But there is history of cards. We have a history of balancing acts that tell us where creatures go, enchantments go, even artifacts. Like if I show you the next card here, if you take a look at this one and you see you got Mox Amber, okay? Mox Man's card. I got the most in the entire world. Remember that. I am, I am heavily invested in this card. But am I really? Because anyone who's been on this channel a long time knows my average buy price for this. Average across all the copies I own is like $7.19, okay? And with a large position of my collection sold off over a, a six-month period, I actually have paid for all the cards I still own, okay? So I'm actually at the break-even point, even if this card goes to zero, I got my money out because I realized the longer this card went, the more likely it was to get a reprint. And I had just finished selling off my large position before Brothers Ward, and we saw the Brothers Ward reprint of this card with the serialized copies and stuff. Amazing. It brought the price down briefly, but as you can see, because of what that artifact does, and because of the low casting cost Planeswalkers that they keep, uh, not just Planeswalkers, legendary creatures that they keep injecting, into Commander, this card holds a lot of value still, 35, 40 bucks. It seems to hold and it's slowly over time still drifting up. So this card is going to recover, but the reprint it got was not in a standard set, even though it's in the Brothers War, it was a specialty card inside that set. It wasn't in every box. It wasn't in every five or six boxes. It was still hard to get. So the card value took a hit, but the amount of copies injected weren't the same. So depending on where you were in the market space and depending on the time frame you owned the card, you may decide to get out like I did knowing that it was going to get a reprint and the value was going to drop. And if you bought it when it first came out, there was a real drop on the Dominaria copies. Not what didn't go down to five bucks, but it did go down to the early 20s, which would have been a massive savings from this card being at $65 US or basically a hundred bucks a copy to get it. Remember, when you look at Dominaria 2018, it was a short print run. This wasn't like a massive set that got reprinted a whole bunch of over and over times. It got a you know, print run cut short. Very interesting times back there in 2018 compared to where we are now. But that's the thing. Where we are now, it is a tighter market. The values of boxes are high. The card values are holding a lot stronger than they used to after the post 90 days because the money moves on to new products so quickly, we're in this weird time period right now, weird kind of time warp where singles cards aren't dropping the way they did. So right now there already is a bit of a buffer from our cards going to zero.
for people who've been buying cards like the Voltborn Tyrant and all these kind of higher priced dinosaurs and cards, they're not likely to see them drop down to like eight, nine dollars like we used to see because there's just not as many being opened up and we're not opening products. It's kind of a weird thing where the values stay high, right? Because there's just not as much supply to drag the price down. And the people wanting to buy it, the buyers out there, recognize the price isn't dropping. I really want to own this card. I guess I'll spend that $28, $29, $30 to finally get myself a copy. Because I feel pretty safe and secure in the fact this card really hasn't changed price since its release date. A week after release, it kind of got headed off at the pass and it's been sticking pretty strong. And that's something else. That's something that players are going to have to pay attention to going forward when watching what's going on with card prices because the market can shift. Wizards could inject a whole bunch of copies. They can get secret layers. They control all the levers. They're the ones who can show you what's behind the curtain in the Wizard of Oz, right? But here, for you at home deciding how you wanna value your cards and if you need to sell them, I'd stick to that five-year rule if you bought it right at the beginning. If not, take away the years since you bought it and recognize that card is likely going to get a reprint. And sometimes it gets it even faster. There are times they'll put this thing right into a secret layer. If you look at cards like Deadly Dispute from Dungeons and Dragons, you know, Adventures in Forgotten Realms, the boxes didn't get open as much as we thought they were going to with the uh, Commander Legends, Baldur's Gate and stuff. So when they didn't get as many copies open, that, that card went to like $4. And they had to put it into all kinds of crazy things right away just to drag the value down because they didn't expect that uncommon to be as worth as much money as it became. It was a sought after card and we're seeing it right now as well. We're seeing multiple cards do the exact same thing. So it's something to keep your eye on, but I'd like to know what you guys are doing. If you have some pattern or way that you like to sell your cards, slam that down, share the information with people here on the channel. Thanks again for tuning in. And of course, I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow for another video. If you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe new content every single day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great one. Hey guys, welcome back to the end of the video. These are the patrons. You see the names flying by. You gotta show that respect, show that love like I do every day. Because of the patrons, daily uploaded content gets made and that's what I like to remind people of because of you guys out there, the patrons, the YouTube membership members for making it happen. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day today. Hey guys, welcome back. You've made it down the yellow brick road past the guards at the Emerald Kingdom you're in the audience chamber and you're looking past the curtain. The curtain? It's right over here. Here, here. Green screen curtain. That's right, I hang it right across on some of the videos. So, you're behind the curtain right now. Welcome to that ramble jamble party. When you look at products we've seen in the past, if you, if you look at things like, uh, you know, good old Commander Legends, this thing at the time of printing was a different, different economic climate. We were opening these things like Mad Men. It was a great time. Jeweled Lotus, right? $25 card, I think I said at the time. Who was I wrong? So you look at that now, and they reprinted it in Commander Masters, made it a hard-to-get card, and, of course, a different economic climate. When you see that card now getting reprinted, did it really lose any value? How much did they actually influx into the, into the market, and what happened to it? That's where we're at. Look at things like Mana Crypt. It's not that easy to get, kind of hard, holds its price at a certain level, and this... This is where we find ourselves right now in the market space for Magic the Gathering. Doesn't mean it's always going to stay that way, but right now it is. So does that mean you sell your cards now, hold your cards now? I guess it really depends on where you're at and what you desire your cards to be. Are you keeping them forever because you love them inside a deck? Or are you trying to flip them into something else, maybe move up into higher-end Magic cards on the reserve list? Depending on how you decide to play the game, you can come out ahead or lose your shirt, so it's best to pay attention to the market. Uh, if you ever have questions, guys, you can shoot me an email. A lot of players do it regularly. A lot of my patrons, of course, utilize my knowledge. They can get some info. Happy to help out whenever I can because the idea of losing a lot of money in this game scares me a little bit when you've invested this much time and money. You're hoping for a certain, you know, kind of equilibrium to keep playing. At least I know I do. So thanks again, guys. Have a great one. Now to go make dinner.